Hello everyone, David here. PS4 emulation is getting good. We're still a way off having compatibility with a lot of games, but the developers at Shad PS4 have obviously been working hard and are making progress. There are a few games you can already call playable, and many more showing signs of booting up. I found there wasn't a complete setup guide yet, so here's a quick run through of the steps required to get Shad PS4 up and running. And before we dive in, I just want to say I do not condone piracy at all. In fact, I'm a games developer myself, and I believe that if you enjoy some form of entertainment, the creator deserves, and probably needs, remuneration for that. But I also think we should have the ability to back up our games in case the console or disc fails later on. And I also think that emulating consoles is just kind of fun. So, to get up and running, first of all, go to the Shad PS4 GitHub page and click on Releases, and download the latest one for your system. You'll want the QT version, which has a GUI. There's no installer yet, so unzip it to a directory of your choice. I've chosen C colon slash Shad PS4, and run it to get started. You'll now want to create a folder for all the game installs. I've chosen C colon slash Shad PS4 PKG for package, but again, it can be anything you like, even inside the main folder if you want. I made it separate so I can replace the whole Shad PS4 folder if I need to update the app later easily. Now, you need some files. In particular, you need some system modules from a PS4 itself. The ethically correct way to obtain these is from your own PS4, by using a jailbreak or similar method to get access to the system files. Now, if your PS4 has up-to-date firmware, at the time of writing version 12 is the latest, you won't be able to jailbreak yet, so you will probably just need to turn off auto-updates and wait, and hope, that your version can be cracked in the future. But if you have any version up to 11, Jailbreaking is possible without any hardware modifications, and you can use this method to get your hands on the files you need. Of course, if this isn't possible for you, it is possible to find the files online, I just can't tell you exactly where. Once you have the system modules, find your Shad PS4 directory, go into user slash sysmodules and copy them there. Now you need the games. Again, a jailbroken PS4 with some homebrew is the ethical way to obtain these. An app like PS4 File Explorer or Items Flow will give you access to the package files. There is usually one for the base game and another for an update. But essentially, what you need is a .pkg file for the game that Shad PS4 can install. When you're ready, go to File, Install Packages, and point it at the main game file first. It can take a while to install, and it might appear to be stuck, but give this process a few minutes, and even longer for large games, and it should eventually finish PKG extraction and show the title in the main menu. Then, if there are any updates, perform the same process for installing a package, and it will update the installed game. You're nearly ready to emulate. You might wish to go into the settings and change the target resolution, and tweak any other settings. The controller is picked up automatically, and at the time of writing it's not possible to rebind inputs, but I expect this will come in a future update. Double-click the game you want to play, and it should start to run. Be warned, many games will just give you a black screen and then crash at this point, so consult the game compatibility list on GitHub to see if your game is likely to run. For example, out of all the games I own, Gravity Rush Remastered is the only one that actually runs well at the moment. The Last Guardian and Persona 5 start up and show signs of life, but then crash. But in the case of Gravity Rush, things are looking great. I can emulate this at a super high resolution and decent frame rate. Audio and controls are working. It's really impressive progress. There is a slight issue with text not appearing, and of course there are hardware restrictions. My 8-bit Doe gamepad here doesn't have a speaker for audio directly from the pad. And while it does have some gyro support, I don't think it's available in PC mode. So now we have a kind of competitor to remote play. Obviously it's very early days, but in the future you may be in a quandary. If you want to play your PS4 game on some other device, do you stream it or emulate it? The excellent PX Play app will let you play your PS4 games anywhere in the world if you set it up properly, and have a decent network connection, of course. But emulators like Shad PS4 could avoid the need for networking, and provide some other benefits such as improved resolutions, and features like save states. Shad PS4 does run on an ROG Ally X, and it's quite charming to see your PS4 games on a mobile device. 
It's rather reminiscent of my PS Vita, which is a 10 plus year old memory for me now. So in conclusion, unless you want to play a handful of games, it's not ready for mass consumption yet, but it's definitely worth watching this space, and fascinating to play around with if you're a tinkerer like me. I am amazed at how quickly the developers have put this together, and I hope the progress continues. It seems like working on an emulator is a somewhat dangerous prospect at the moment. Nintendo are being crazy litigious, and although Sony hasn't obviously followed suit, if emulation becomes too convenient, they may start going after developers, and possibly even helpful YouTubers, who tell you how to get it up and running. That's why it's important not to let piracy be the outcome of this. If Sony don't see emulation dipping into their profits, it's more likely they'll let it slide, and classify it as more like a fascination with their platform and not a threat that needs to be stamped out. Well, that's it from me. If this video was useful, please give me a thumbs up, and you can help me out by subscribing to my channel as well. See you next time.